Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching Channel Television, celebrating 21 years of professional broadcasting. This is the News at 10. Well, here are some of the pictures you send into our eyewitness portal. We'll begin with this one from Akure Owo Expressway, showing an overloaded truck with steel pipes. Our reporter says this is dangerous for other road users because the pipes can easily fall off from the truck. Next is this photo from Lagos Ibado Expressway showing a vehicle belonging to the Federal Road Safety Corps as the FRSC. Our reporter says this act is against the rules of road safety. This next picture is from Mushin in Lagos State showing a flooded expressway. Our reporter is asking the state government to fix and construct drainage system on the road corridor. The reporter also says the road has been left like this for weeks and called for quick rehabilitation. Still in Lagos is this dangerous adventure by this youth. Our reporter says skating in between moving vehicles on the expressway should be discouraged. The reporter is calling on road safety officers to monitor such people. And finally is this report of a gully erosion in Victoria State. Elder John Close Elenwo Port Harcourt, our reporter says his gully has almost swallowed their houses. The reporter is asking the River State Government to do something about it urgently. We well, thank you for sending these reports. Please note that you too can report news and events as they happen around you. All you have to do is download the channel's television app from their stores. The people of Fuga in Esako, central northern axis of Edo State, have been asked to vote the governorship candidate of the All Progressives Congress in September in the September 10 governorship election. Addressing APC faithful in the area during its rally, the governor of Edo State and some other officials of the party in the state believe retaining the party and its candidate, Mr. Godwin Obaseki, is a sure way of taking the state to the next level of development and prosperity. APC! Obaseki for governors! It's the turn of the people of Fuga and environs to host the All Progressives Congress governorship campaign. The people turned out in their numbers to receive leaders of the party led by Governor Adams of Shomale, including the party's flag bearer in the September the 10th governorship poll, Godwin Obaseki. The event shifts into gear with the chairman of the APC in Edo State, Anselmo Jezwa, highlighting what the state stands to gain with a vote for the APC and its candidate. Godwin Obaseki and Philip Shaibu, they are our people and they are going to Osadebe Avenue by your power on September 10th. Remember. This is our symbol. For Governor Adams of Shomole, the September the 10th election is all about the future of Edo State. And he believes it's only the APC that has what it takes to deliver a secured and prosperous future for its people. Our governor, the man of the people, the man where we are proud of, Osho Jiki 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 Jiki, Osho Kwe, Osho Papa, Osho Jinja, Osho O. economy and get the people working. So when you talk about 2,000, 200,000 jobs, it's a product of thinking, of planning, of reflection, and of creativity. And it will come to pass. Like those who spoke before him, the message of the APC governorship candidate to the people is clear. He wants them to forget about any other political party and cast their ballot for him. Our priority is to make sure that we build an economy to expand the economy of Edo State and Esako Central so that many of you and most of you can get work. We say we're going to give 200,000 jobs. We are coming to set up large scale commercial farms around Esako Central. With the messages passed and still more ground to be covered in the campaigns for votes, the coming days will be more interesting for all the contending parties in Edo State. 
Homeschooling is a practice common in the Western world, with statistics showing almost 1.8 million children homeschooled in the United States as of 2013. There is no official data of parents practicing homeschooling in Nigeria, but this is not to say that it is not in practice here. Our correspondent, Ini Thompson, visited one of the parents, one of such parents in Lagos, who has embraced this system and tells us their story. Bekeme Oluwola is an entrepreneur but spends the better part of her day with her daughters at home. This makes her happy as she says it's just one of the benefits of engaging in homeschooling, although she's had to make very conscious decisions to make it work. Because they're girls, I have two female teachers who come in to teach them every day. They come at 9 and leave at 4 p.m. every day. Before the start of term, we agree the curriculum, we agree the timetable, we agree all of the subjects. I was lucky to, or I strategically sought two teachers, one um, who's of Yoruba origin and an Igbo lady, so they learn both Igbo and Yoruba. Five times one, five, three, five times one, three, five times And so far, Mrs. Olowola is happy with the result of our decision. We've gotten a school where we write exams at. Basically, we test ourselves, and I can tell you that they're in the over 90th percentile in the exam, so they're doing fantastically well. But there's the need for interaction with other children, as well as extracurricular activities. We go swimming three times a week. We play tennis, tennis twice a week, lawn tennis. That is why we join a, a, a homeschooling association you organize outings with other kids. Uh, you can choose to go to the beach. You know, you can choose to go to a museum. You can, you know, choose to go to a concert. You know, a movie. You know, basically create a community for those children. Professor Awoshika recommends homeschooling for economic and security reasons as alternative to no school for children in affected areas. Although homeschooling is a relatively new term in Nigeria, a close observation shows that it is catching on and there's the need for a framework to be put in place either by the government or parents involved in the education system to avoid ineffective results or abuse of the system. Ini Thompson reporting for Channel Television News. Joining me now on the News at 10 to talk more about homeschooling in Nigeria is Ngozi Osarewe. She's a professor of counseling psychology and head of the department Educating Foundations, University of Lagos. Professor, good evening to you and thank you so much for joining me on the News at 10. Good evening. Always a pleasure to be here. What do you think about homeschooling? <laughs> homeschooling is uh, talking of the ideal situation. The ideal situation in the sense that um, is an aristocratic thing. Because even the statistics we are looking at, 1.8 million in the U.S. That was at, as at three years ago. 2013. 2013. 1.8. What is the population? That is what I'm saying. And... Even the woman that was shown with her children, she had to get people. And the people she got, how long are they spending with the children? Which curriculum are they using? What about, in fact, most people that um, homeschool their children is basically because they want to inculcate in them social graces and it goes beyond social graces how will that child interact with other children and what about the fully functioning child it is not just the two times two uh, four two times three six that is not education that is just bare anybody, even if you didn't go to school, you can do that. Professor, have you had the opportunity of interacting with a child who has been homeschooled before? I have not. I have not. But I have read about some outside the country. And it is not the way, even here, that you have uh, educated stay-at-home mothers. They don't even, what they do is to help the children 
with their homework, their assignments. They still have to do other chores. And the economic situation in Nigeria is also a very big question mark. And you have how many children? Three children, four children, two children. How are you going to manage that? And what is your competence? And even the tutors you are going to bring in, how many tutors will you bring in to teach your children? But then you see, you talked about the economic situation. The and economic situation in the sense that the woman needs to work. Okay. And the woman is working. The woman needs to work, the woman is working. But don't forget that school fees is not, uh, it's not very cheap these days, whether for, especially for private schools, and that's where most of the children go to. No, so not most of the children. Some children. Some children. Some children, not most. Some children go to And it's schools. not all the private schools that are very expensive. But the least you can pay for a private school is 150,000 naira in some cases. That is not correct. That is not correct. I don't want to mention names of schools. You are looking at the highbrow schools, the schools in Ikoi, the schools in VI. Even in Ikoi and VI, you still have schools where you pay less than 150,000. Even that 150,000, the tutor you are going to bring to teach your child at home will collect money. But Professor, why do you think that homeschooling is beginning to look uh, like a desirable option for parents at this time? Because people have, you know, we imbibe a lot of all these foreign ideas. When you see a white woman, by the way, as at 2013, that 1.8 is about 3% of children in the US and out of this 3% 83% are whites and these are people the, 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 the social status is an issue and the increasing fear in the country they can afford to stay at the father is working and their social amenities, their social security, there are things the child will gain. There are things the child will have. Even if you don't work, you will still have things to be able to take care of your child. But not so in Nigeria. Not so in Nigeria. And which family, which mother and father will train you in the university and you stay at home, not work, and you're putting so much pressure on your husband and you know okay we are technically in recession is it now that we are technically in recession that you are thinking of homeschooling your child homeschooling your child for what society is it this same environment or which environment where will the child go Professor Ngozi, thank you so much for joining me on the news at 10. Thank you very much for having me. And we need to explore this further because homeschooling is not yet it. Professor Ngozi Osarene, thank you so much for coming on the news at 10. But when the news at 10 returns ahead of next week's MPC meeting, an economist calls for the review of the flexible foreign exchange rate policy. That's on business news. Join us again.